Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the first meeting of the personal committee for the year 2014. Uh, we apologize for the slight delay, uh, but obviously uh, we have a, uh, uh, an agenda, uh, a heavy agenda tonight, and there were so matters that needed to be discussed before. Uh, what I would like to do is uh, uh, we stand and salute the flag. I would like to ask Councillor Toomey to lead us in the honor. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the first order of business is to elect the chairman and vice chair of the uh, personal committee. Mr. Chairman, uh, I make a motion to uh, Sandy Almonte be chair. A uh, motion has been second. made uh, and properly second. Any other nominations? Motion to close nomination? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, at this point, I will hand the gavel to the chairman, and she will continue with the meeting in order to select, elect the uh, vice chair. At this moment, I will open nominations for the vice chair for the personnel committee. Madam Chair, I would nominate uh, Onaido Tino as vice chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Congratulations. Welcome to tonight's uh, personnel committee meeting. It is Tuesday, January 28th. Uh, tonight we have um, present voting members. To my left, Anaira Aquino, she is now the vice chair. We have uh, Modesto Maldonado, who uh, is the counselor here also, is Roger Toomey. Um, and I am your chair, Sandy Almonte. First item on the agenda this evening is document number 1914, which is the appointment to the Lawrence Historical Commission for Glavien Lis Cruz. Is Ms. Cruz here? Yes. Can you please, one moment. Yep. Oh. Yes. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> First order of business is the appointment uh, to Lawrence Historical Commission for a three-year term for Glavinelis Cruz. Ms. Cruz, name and address for the record, please. Sure, Glavinelis Cruz, 30 Farnham Street, South Lawrence. Thank you for being here this evening. Good I will open you. it up to the committee if they have any questions for a candidate. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, first of all, I'd like to excuse myself. I'm getting better from a cold, so bear with me. Um, I am a Lawrence native, born and raised here in Lawrence. Um, I went to, I graduated from high school in Methuen. I then went on to college where I majored in psychological and brain sciences and also in Spanish literature. I then proceeded to take some graduate courses in preparation for where I am now. I'm currently a second year doctoral candidate in clinical psychology at the Massachusetts School of Professional Psychology in Newton. So I am a full-time student currently and I also have a consistent client caseload on a weekly basis. So I do psychotherapy to children and families. Any other questions? No, Councilor Toomey? I, I, read your, uh, I read your resume. It's quite yes. impressive. I see <laughs> here uh, you, you, you've uh, mentioned three different areas that you'd like to bounce into, human rights, disability, or historical commission. Why would you pick the historical commission with your background as I should think would be more, more within human rights or disabilities? Sure, certainly. I think that's a great question. I think one would assume, given my field of work, given my field of study, given what I'm interested in, that I would definitely be in, uh, involved in other areas. And I am highly inclined to choose those areas, but I think it's also very important to think outside the box and be comfortable being uncomfortable. And um, I think the historical committee is something that, as you very well know, I'm not quite used to, let's say, or I'm not as versed, well versed in that um, committee. So I said, why not? Why not give myself a challenge and try something different? Oh, very good. I do know, I do know a couple, well, some of the gentlemen on the, uh, some of the people on the Historical Commission, and uh, they're very, very well versed in Lawrence. And uh, I do recall, oh, going back a couple of years, we, uh, we appointed a couple of uh, Spanish gentlemen to the, the Historical Commission, 
And I had met them one day, and I asked them how they liked it. They said, oh, we love it, but we don't know much about Lawrence. Well, all they had to do was go back and talk to Eunice Tunzer and David Nee, and they have a, their a vocabulary of what's happened in Lawrence. So if you want to learn about that, that's, that's a good spot. Sure. Good. Definitely. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? Any other comments, questions? What do you, um, do you have any specific object objectives uh, that you are looking uh, to contribute uh, in this particular committee? Sure. Um, well, I've never really been involved um, too much when it comes to uh, these type of matters. I am currently involved in the Mayor's Health Task Force. I'm an active member of the Behavioral Health Working Group as well as the Youth Network. So as far as experience goes, that's where my extent goes. But I think there's certain past, um, characteristics that are really, um, you know, they span out no matter what you decide to do. So there are many, I think, qualities that one can possess that might make you an attractive candidate no matter what position you're looking for, I think. Um, but for me personally, I'm really, um, I'm really optimistic, I'm really self-sufficient, um, and I think those are qualities that are good for any, any position really that you're work, uh, looking towards, you know, aspiring to working with. I'm also very attentive to detail. Um, I'm also bilingual, not that that um, means anything specifically, but at least I'm bilingual and bicultural, and just by the nature of being a Lawrence native, I think growing up in this community, um, I have seen a lot, learned a lot, and I still look forward to learning even more. Um, let, me, let me thank you, first of all, uh, for applying to form part of this commission. Uh, obviously, uh, we need good people in there. We need, good, we need people that are not only willing to learn, learn fast, and, but also do a good job for the citizens of Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, ditto. I'm not going to keep repeating what everyone else has said. You have an excellent, excellent um, resume here. And to be on the Historical Commission, I think that, like you said, thinking outside the box you would bring different ideas, especially where that's not your area of expertise. Sure. You will look at things in a different light. So, um, you know, you, you, you will definitely be an asset there, especially where you're so eloquently, um, you, you have, uh, you're a very good head on your shoulders. And I want to thank you for giving back to the city also because you're a young person. You have, as you've described your day, it's full of caseloads and people and behavioral health is not something easy to deal with. Apparently isn't. <laughs> I know growing up so. and working in, in different areas that those things take up a lot of your time and even psychologically it affects the people you, you, you help to uh, in their effect in their life and in, in, in social behaviors, but it also affects you. Certainly. And so it drains a lot of your energy and stuff like that. But being on the historical commission, I believe, um, it is, is definitely giving back to the city because you're caring about the aesthetics of the city. So I, I want to uh, thank you for signing up for this commission. Um, we're going to move the question. M Madam Chair, yes. Uh, I will make a motion that we send it to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Councilor oh, Toby? Did you, have any, you had any questions Mr. before that? It, it's kind of a... Um, how would you pronounce your first name? <laughs> so that I have to thank my parents for, for being creative, right? Um, my full name is Glavielinis, but obviously it's a, it's a mouthful, so I'm okay with being called Glavi. Glavi? Glavi. Glavi People will just pretty much know me as Glavi. Well, congratulations. Yes. Cool. Thank, you. thank you. <laughs> Should I make the motion? Oh, you second the motion? Okay. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Congratulations. Um, we will be sending you um, an update as to what, when's our next um, the meeting? The next is uh, February 4th, I believe. Next, or next, next, uh, next Tuesday. Next right. Tuesday. Yes. Next Tuesday at 7 o'clock in Council Chambers. Ex okay. We we'll expect you to be here. Okay. Thank, Great. You. The, uh, Thank you. It's important that you come because other members of the City Council may have questions for you. Sure. So, uh, sure. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Next item of the agenda is document number 2014, which is the appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term, Mr. Jose Pino. Name and address for the record, please. Jose Pino, uh, 7 Wedgwood Drive, Lawrence, Mass. I will open up to the committee for any questions. I'm going to committee. ask you the same question, Jose. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I was born and raised in Lowell. And I went to UMass Lowell where I got a degree in marketing and management. Uh, I moved to Lawrence about three years ago where I purchased a home and I, where I currently live with my wife. I currently volunteer at a local church. 
um, also the treasurer of the Young Professionals uh, Group of Lawrence, and also I'm on the advisory board of Jericho Road, Jericho Road Lawrence. Questions, Councillor Toomey. Yeah. Um, Jose, what, what did you hear about? Uh, how did you find out about an opening for the zoning board? Did somebody asked you. Or you yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, shortly after the election, um, there were uh, some emails that went out, uh, just asking for people who are interested in giving any ideas to better the community. People want to serve and volunteer, and so that's how I became aware of the uh, position initially. Uh, Jose, do you know the uh, what is the function of the zoning board? Uh, from what I've understood and looked at the basically a job description, it's uh, basically interpreting the ordinances and any uh, petitions or appeals that may come through, basically making a, a ruling or a judgment on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever attended any uh, zoning board meetings? Have you ever seen any zoning board meetings? I haven't, no. Um, I've just started to become familiar with the uh, ordinance PDF that's available on the website. Um, and so that's basically the extent of my knowledge of it. Uh, however, I see it as an opportunity to um, sort of get more involved in the community. Um, being young and having not been involved on the board, bringing a different perspective. Um, I'm a homeowner in Lawrence for three years. I've sort of adopted it. Uh, my wife is actually a long, uh, long time Lawrence native. And anything I could do to sort of make the community better, uh, I think it's, be it's best for the city and it's also good as a homeowner. I would like to see my, the value of my house go up and sort of see the city go in the right direction. I'm sorry, did you mention you own your own house now? I do. Okay. Now you've been living in Lawrence for three years? Correct. Any other questions? Um, Jose, how did you get involved in, in uh, the Young Professionals Network here in the city? Uh, initially it was uh, through Pavel Pajano, who's a founding member and uh, was the uh, last president. He actually started to get me involved in certain meetings and uh, I started attending, started to get more active and just saw myself uh, getting more engaged and uh, it was just a natural progression to uh, become on the board. Uh, I wanted to get more involved, um, sort of give input of the direction of the organization, and so I was nominated to the board. So you've been there for a year now? I've been on the board for a year. I've been an active member for a little over two years now. Nice, how do you like it there? I like it. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it has an interesting mix of networking opportunities, social opportunities. <clears throat> Also, that we've had opportunities to host events where there's a, a professional enrichment aspect to it. Mm -hmm. We bring in guest speakers, and uh, also it's an opportunity to volunteer with a group of um, like-minded uh, young individuals as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's a, a great place where people can get engaged and uh, sort of feel connected. So do you think, because um, this is a board that obviously you're gonna have to take some time off that you don't know. Um, the ordinances and stuff like that. So you're going to have to get into a little bit of studying um, and getting familiar with uh, what the laws are and what the ordinances are and stuff like that. But you look like somebody, you seem to me like somebody who, who is uh, wanting to become part of the city and this being one of the places where um, you feel that you fit in to give back um, as in your learning process. I think that um, you, would be, you would be an asset to have um, being young being um, a type of go-getter, you know, definitely um, doing the things that you're doing, you know, volunteering to be with the youth of the city shows a lot uh, that you will develop into whatever aspect you're put into and being on, on, on the board of appeals for the city, you being a homeowner, you have vested interest in, in what happens in there. So um, thank you. Uh, let, let, let me say this. Um, uh, Mayor Rivera made a promise that he was going to integrate as much as possible young professional uh, members of the community. Mm -hmm. And obviously, with the first two individuals that we have interviewed so far, I think he's keeping his promises. And it is, it was long overdue that we start integrating uh, young professionals into city government mm -hmm. and making sure that they become active in city government and uh, eventually, 
in the near future, you guys will run for office and uh, replace <laughs> replace us, uh, and, and 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 that and that is great. That is great, and, and I hope that um, that the experience in in this in these commissions and these boards are a good one. Make sure that is that is worthwhile. That you grow and you learn as much as you can, and that uh, you do the best you can uh, for the benefit of the city, of the taxpayer. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Any other questions, oh, Councillor Tomey? No, I'm also, I'd like all a motion set? to send this up with a positive recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We'll see you here on Tuesday. Next Tuesday. On, at seven o'clock, and there will be other councillors here who will probably have other questions for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we'll most likely start on time. I said we most likely will start on time. Okay. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is document number 2114, which is the appointment to the licensing board for a six-year term of Mr. Pedro Torres. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Good Torres. Evening. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Pedro A. Torres, 51 West Street, Lawrence, Mass. I will open uh, the for the committee questions. Yes. Uh, Pedro, I have spoken to you before. Uh, on the phone, and obviously your name came um, before the uh, personnel before as a recommendation, mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason it was delayed. Uh, did, did he go through the interview? At that no, time? I didn't. I didn't go, go to personnel last okay. time. Okay, okay. Uh, Pedro, let's let's follow the same probably the same format that we that we started with the other two people. And uh, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm, I've been a Lawrence resident since 1966. My parents came to Lawrence in 1954. Mm. We were one of the first Hispanics families in Lawrence. Um, I work currently for the last 16 years as the general manager of Napolitano Marble Grant, where I do the management and the daily operations of 15 employees. I own my own home in Lawrence uh, on West Street. Um, I also volunteered at the YMCA teaching English as a basic English course. And basically we belong to the Chamber of Commerce. And um, I'm pretty well known through the city because I've been here so long. <laughs> That's great. Any other questions? Councilor Tumi, any questions for our yes, candidate? I, yes, I do. Um, Pedro, thank you for applying, by the way. Thank no you. problem. You know, it's a six year term. Yes, sir. Um, do you happen to know who you're replacing? As, uh, right now, I think it's Myra Lantigua. Myra Lantigua. Yes. Um, She's the only one that I know of that is overdue. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a question for uh, uh, Vargas. Vargas. Yes. Are you representing the mayor down here? On this? I have a question. Now. Uh, name and address for the record, please, Abel. Can you please come to the podium then? Thank you. Name and address for the record, please. Um, Abel Vargas, 610 Haverhill Street. Thank you. Uh, I'm familiar with the licensing commission because I was on it for six years. Now, normally what happens is uh, the mayor selects someone to be the chairman. I guess Milo Lantigua has been filling in as, as chairman for the temporarily. That, that is correct. Now, is he, going to, is he going to name someone as chair? Because someone has to run the meeting. Yes, we, we will be naming someone as chair. Um, I, w I, was, I wasn't under the, under the impression that we had to do this tonight. Um, but we, we will be submitting someone as, as chair of the board. Okay, before the next meeting. Before the next meeting, correct. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Torres? The only, the only question that came up, Pedro, um, was the, um, whether or not how long you've been unenro unenrolled. I've been unenrolled since I registered to vote. I, yeah, I found that out. <laughs> yeah, I've been telling people that, but for some reason the paper has been getting it wrong. Yeah, I know it. Uh, I know the last time it had to, uh, there was a problem with, with a Republican and a Democrat. They, correct. They had to replace a Democrat. They had to replace a Republican. You weren't a Republican. That's correct. Uh, they had to have a Republican and a Democrat on there, and there was only one Democrat. That's on correct. There. So. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Matter of fact, I spoke to Bill Maloney and I got a copy of your um, registration when you signed up, which was in 2001. And you've been That's on the ever since. So that there's no problem with you going on to the, the Licensing Commission because they do have a Republican and a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. 
Uh, can you give us just a little bit of an idea of what you're going, what you plan on doing? I know you've been very interested in it. You were, you had come w once before to the board for, to be appointed to that uh, particular uh, board too, uh, commission. Yes, uh, as you all know, I was appointed in. Uh, I got to take off my glasses to read. Uh, Ten sixteen twelve, and I was taken off due to a technicality that there had to be a Democrat, a Republican, and we only had Democrats and myself that's unenrolled. And ever since then, I've been reading uh, the ABCC rules, and I've also done a little bit of uh, my own investigating. And one of the things I noticed as a resident of this city is that nobody's monitoring. Uh, the last time I can ever remember of something coming out in the paper that somebody was monitoring was actually Mr. Toomey, which was probably a good uh, I'd have to say six, seven years ago. But ever since that, I read the paper and I see all these problems, but I don't feel like anybody's monitoring it. So myself, I think that one of the biggest issues with the licensing board in general is that there's no management. You need somebody that has to manage it. In other words, I feel that they're issuing liquor licenses and other licenses, but they're not educating these people that are applying for these licenses. So a lot of times these people are opening up and they're breaking rules and they don't even realize sometimes that they're actually breaking the rules because nobody's ever informed them of what the regulations of the liquor licenses are. So one of the first things that I have an idea is that I wanna go to all these places and show them what they're not doing correctly according to chapter 138 of the alcohol liquor book and show them all the things that they're doing wrong and then give them the opportunity to correct them. And then, you know, if they don't correct them, then obviously I think we have to take action against these places so they can be safer for people to visit them. And that's one of my uh, main goals of this whole process with the liquor boards. Well, I, I can only re I can only reflect back on my experience. Um, I, I did not look at situations the way you did. I felt that if someone was going to apply for a liquor license, which is very important, that it would be it would behoove that particular person to learn everything that was supposed to be associated with it. And when you when I asked them if they knew all the liquor laws, they said yes, but come <laughs> to find out that they don't. <laughs> exactly. You know? So, so I, uh, I think, I mean, myself personally, I don't think I should be going out there closing places down because they are bringing employment and tax dollars to the city. But I think we have to give them an opportunity to know what they're doing wrong. And then if they don't correct them, then that's a different issue. And I think somebody needs to, you know, there's three people on the board and all three of us should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Pedro, what, what year did you attend the vocational school? I went 1980 80 through 83. 80 through 83, okay. You were a guidance counselor back then. Yes, I was there, yes. <laughs> 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 that day is my age. <laughs> counselor Aquino? Hi, Pedro. Hi. I know Pedro long, long time ago. He's one of my constituents. Um, Pedro, I know you know a lot of people, um, and I would like to know if that's going to be a conflict when mm. somebody comes to you because they know you, they think they can get away with stuff. I just want to make sure that... No, that I, the, the people that know me know me I'm pretty tough. Mm. I'm <laughs> by the book. Yeah. They, they believe, I, I don't believe that anybody thinks they can get uh, away with anything with me. Yeah. And, and most of the people that I do know, I don't, I don't think I know the majority of the people that own the clubs or the restaurants because I really work a lot, so I don't attend to many of them in Lawrence. So, yeah. I mean, the people I know is just normal people that you see every day, you know, but not the owners of the restaurants and the bars. So that means that you're going to be willing to go to different places and oh, yeah. make sure that they are trying to do the best? Uh, my, I expect to go out every weekend. 
to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of the job. Yes, I, it is. I, I that is part of the it job. Is. I we, agree with you. We have to agree with that, that a lot of the conflicts that are happening, and I say that because I used to own a, a club. It's because they're not supervision. Mm -hmm. Correct. There's a lot of people that are willing to do this stuff the correct way, but sometimes they don't even know what they're doing. They just own a business and then trying to survive. And yeah, they make mistakes, like anybody makes I, mistakes. I agree with you. And we're, as a city, we should advise them what to do, where to go, if they need the training, where to go, go and get the training. I don't see anything wrong to make mistakes. I do see that we have to be part of it and I help them to resolve the problems. And that's what we're here for. I agree with you 100%. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for making the difference. Well, Pedro, um, this is not your first uh, scene in front of us here. Personnel, you were already, um, he had already been put on the board, but like we said, uh, there was a conflict. Uh, one of the ways that we had spoken about before was the TIP certification. TIP certification is a surefire way mm -hmm. for all of this to go away. Um, myself and Delilah from Lawrence Methuen Community Coalition had gone out to Boston and certified ourselves to be able to come into the city and give these trainings for free. And I'm hoping, and I had come before the board, but we were denied at that time. <laughs> and I'm hoping that this time when we bring this to the city that we can move it forward. This will give education as to what over-serving is, uh, over the overpouring, um, and it will help in a lot of instances the business owner, and it will help the patrons that come in there because they will be safe. Um, it will also um, train the waitresses so that they know when they're overserving or when they know that so there's a certain situation that's uh, happening in the club. Um, there is also, a, I'm not sure if that grant is still out, but when we were looking to get TIP certification for the city of Lawrence, there was a grant for the sliders that was uh, coming out. What happens with those sliders is that if you have a 200 person capacity at your club or at, at your restaurant, that you can't slide another card over 200. So that you do out for the people <coughs> who are leaving your club, you slide their cards out, their, their identification, so that you know that this patron left the club. If there's a shooting in the club or some other type of instance was to happen in the club, there is um, a database that's on the slider that you're going to be able to pull up everybody that was in that place. Wow. Who came in and who left. That slider also indicates to you um, kind of like this person came in 11th and this person came 12th. So you'll be able to tell who was in the group. That identifies in a lot of ways and that would help. You know, but it would take the activism of the people on that board to want to have this implemented in our city, one, and two, to be the go-getters of the grant and to help us acquire those grants for the city. And I think that would be, that would be such a positive um, thing to do and I, I, I would love to be able to have that implemented in the city. I will go back out to Boston with Delilah and get recertified so that we can bring that. And it will be free of charge and we will go to each establishment and do the certification there. So I think that that'll be something really positive for the city. It's something that we tried doing before, and thankfully we're going to hopefully <clears> be able to do it now. So, But then again, thank you for um, applying for this board once again, and, and I don't think that you're going to have a problem getting on the licensing board this time around. And um, I look forward to working with you and getting everybody tip certified, seeing that you're being aggressive with this. <laughs> so at this moment, I guess I'm looking for a motion. motion. If no, if no other questions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Be here on Tuesday. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you uh, very much. 7 o'clock, maybe yep. the other counselors will have further questions for you. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Next item on the agenda is document number 2214, appointment to the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority for a five-year term, Elias Rodriguez. Welcome, Mr. Rodriguez. Your name and address for the record, please. Elias Rodriguez, 190 Ferry Street, Lawrence, Massachusetts. You're my constituent. That's right. <laughs> um, before we start, I, I have an updated resume because I just recently uh, got a new position, so I'd like sure. to share that with you. Sure. You can pass it on. Yeah. Thank you.
I will open up for the committee to ask questions. Uh, Elias or Elias, eh, which yeah. is where, where you prefer. Uh, yeah. uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a new. Uh, I came from the Bronx uh, in 2002 uh, to Lawrence, and um, I attended Great Lawrence Technical School and uh, graduated in 2005 as a valedictorian. Um, and then I attended uh, UMass Lowell uh, and did electrical engineering. And then after that, I've, I became a uh, test engineer for uh, networking equipment. Mm -hmm. And I am now a software and support engineer for Schneider Electric uh, in Andover. And a uh, current homeowner, just became a father, and uh, just looking to, to help the town out, you know? <laughs> Congratulations. Mm. So. Any further questions? Councillor Tomey? Yeah, how did you hear about the opening? Um, just went on the website. Uh, I, I see that there's been a, quite, a, quite a bit of openings available. Um, uh, the redevelopment authority kind of stuck out to me a little bit because it gives, gives me a chance to at least to kind of like, I don't know how you would say this, but revitalize Lawrence, you know what I mean? Uh, taking those old properties and, and making them new businesses and or helping the city um, make them into, into uh, properties that, that could be sold on to, to other, to other uh, potential buyers. Um, so it's just opportunity um, and why not help? Lawrence, you know, so very interested. Could you? Um, it, it just seems, it just seems to me kind of strange. We have a new, new administration here, and now we're, we're, we're coming up with several different uh, people who are coming in, stepping forward to different with different boards. Um, did you have any idea prior to this change of administration that you might be interested in doing something like this? Um, as you submitted your, as you submitted your resume before. No, no, definitely. This is the first time. Um, again, I'm only 26. Uh, I, before this year, I was, I was like looking for jobs and, and taking care of my family. Um, so, um, I, I've been seeing all the positive, positive things happening recently. So I said, eh, why not? Let me just see if I can make a difference. And this, this would be my shot. Well, good. Thank you for that. Thank you. All set. Any other further questions for a candidate? What year did you graduate from the Volk? 2005. 2005, yeah. and what department were you in? I was in uh, electronics technology. Electronics. Um, um, I don't know if you if you remember Kerry Croto or uh, Mr. Bob Cashman. Bob Cashman, I remember, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, he was uh, my favorite he teacher. He was still there at that time. Yeah. That's good. Yep. <laughs> I understand that he retired, but uh, yeah, that's great, great. I don't, I don't have any more questions. So. I have to say that um, I don't know if anyone else here has noticed tonight out of all the young people who have come before us are homeowners in our city. Yep. <laughs> I have to say uh, that I'm, I'm, I am I'm, I'm, ha I'm so happy to hear that we have young people within our city who are investing in our city, who want to stay in our city, and who, who are getting on these boards to want to wanna give back. And I think that that is so awesome, especially yourself. You're a very young person, you're only 26 years old, as you said, you're an electrical engineer. Yep. Graduated from the Vogue, has a new baby, has a house. Yeah. yeah. So Have that's, yeah, that's, that's probably one of the reasons why I haven't looked at it before, because it's just so many new things uh, with my life, so. Mm -hmm. that's and especially why. where you're looking to integrate and ground your family roots here, obviously. Yeah, definitely. definitely. If, you're if you're willing to give time for, you know, basically what you, what you said at the beginning is that you want to be able to help to redevelop these homes so oh, that yeah. they can be resold and, and, and all of that and be in, that's, that's so positive. That, that tells me a lot. That says that you, obviously, you're, you're a dad. You right. want to ground your family here and also, um, to help the city move forward and, and, and make it a better place for, for when your daughter or your son yes. gets to the <laughs> age where they're going to school and, exactly. and all of that stuff. So I think, I think it's great. Um, this is a breath of fresh air to have all the young people here this evening um, getting uh, on all these boards and, and commissions. I, I'm flat. I'm, 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 very, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Um, also, I just, I mean, I'm, I love, like, my, my, my best friend has a... Uh, has a lot of properties in Lawrence, and after helping him, like uh, just redo all of them, and and then have and go through the entire process of of gutting everything out and redoing it, and seeing the end result, I think that's just awesome. You know what I mean? Like, so I love building and and fixing things up myself. Uh, I do that often, uh, so 
I, can, I guess this was like the perfect fit for me because I just like uh, help it like revitalizing things, whether it be housings or my car or like computers and stuff like that. So, thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Are there any further questions for our candidate? Make a, motion. To Make a motion to send this up with a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. Next Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. you Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, be here on Tuesday, 7 o'clock. All righty. Thank Alrighty. you. See you then. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is document number 2314, which is the appointment to Lawrence Redevelopment Authority for a five year term, Mr. James Patrick O'Donoghue. Mm -hmm. Name and address for the record, please. Welcome. Uh, James Patrick O'Donoghue, and 288 Andover Street. South, it's on the south side, but it's Lawrence. And I will open and open the questions up for the committee. Yes, uh, obviously, thank you for, uh, for applying. Uh, the fact that you run for mayor says a great deal uh, about yourself and your interest to move the city forward and making a difference in the city of Lawrence. And, uh, and I'm glad that, uh, that even though you did not get elected, you're going to be farming you're going to be forming some in in some way you are going to contribute to our city which is what you really wanted to do so thank you uh tell us a little bit about yourself just to i, I mean we know a great deal about you but okay uh, well, just for the sake of following the same format all right to be fair to the others i was born in 1951 <laughs> in methuen at the hospital but my parents lived in lawrence so I have a Lawrence birth certificate, a <laughs> Methuen birth certificate, and one in Boston. And um, I had a grandmother born here in 1851 on Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, some of my mother's family on her mother's side was here when, um, just after the Pilgrims landed. <laughs> so I'm a little unusual. My father's my father's uh, family, his parents came from Ireland, and he had a, his um, dad, dad's grandmother was from Spain, actually, so, um, and she was a, a quarter, actually, he was a quarter Spanish, my grandfather, and uh, un unusual for an Irishman, he didn't look Irish, he looked Spanish, and the family was from Andalusia, so he was a darker Spanish, my mm -hmm. grandfather. Uh, he came to this country. I'm talking about him. I'm supposed to be talking about myself. <laughs> it's just such a great story. I love, I really love Lawrence. I love the, the mix of people that we have here. Um, in my youth, I got involved. I was a carpenter to start off with. So I, I got my feet wet in that and then did some construction estimating and started working with numbers. I did some of my own designing uh, back in the 70s. And uh, I actually got involved a little bit in politics. That runs in my blood as well. And I worked on getting some money for the city of Lawrence to change some things back in the 70s. If you look at Essex Street, you see nice trees. You see brick sidewalks. You see historic buildings. Back in the early 70s, if you came to Lawrence, you would see sheet metal facades covering up buildings with large lettering on them that said things like Cherry and Webb or Sutherland. And all the beauty of the historic architecture was hidden underneath. And um, I went and worked with the State Historic Commission and others and actually met with the people in the Dukakis administration like Frank Keefe and um, I wrote some initial legislation, and it got funded, and the study came, and the city of Lawrence got trees planted. Eventually, the facades on the buildings were restored to much more closer to the original. And um, I mean, I think it's a beautiful street. I don't, I don't know what you think, but I think Essex Street is beautiful. Um, and then there was a threat at one time during the late 70s to possibly take the North Common and build a high school there. And uh, so I went and worked to get that onto the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And I also wrote the initial legislation for the uh, Heritage Parks Bill. 
um, which brought money to the city to restore the canal street area, the canals themselves, to build the Pemberton Park, um, to build the visitor center, the Robert Frost Fountain across the street. And there were a lot of things that I did like that. And, you know, I didn't get my name out there for doing it. I just did it because I love the city. And, excuse me, <coughs> I'm having a, a sinus headache. <laughs> and it's sort of interfering with my thoughts. But I did those things, and I didn't get recognized for them until 1985, believe it or not. Uh, I think it was August the 20th, and it's on record, and you can find it in the old Eagle, Tr Eagle Tribunes on microfilm, where they then gave me this commendation for doing these things. But I also, in the, in the 70s, uh, at that time, I remember the uh, stadium projects were boarded up, a lot of the, the units in there and other p our housing projects were really deteriorated. So I worked with Mass Law Reform through the uh, state, had a committee, uh, community action program, and Lawrence, it was, it was actually out of the Community Action Council, they had a community action program housing committee, and I got onto that. And they had funding for new public housing, and I says, wait a minute here, what about <laughs> the existing public housing? Our projects are, are in shambles. So I actually got everyone that was on the board to go back to their communities and gather their statistics of how many units were vacant. And uh, we sat down with Mass Law Reform and we rewrote public policy on public housing. And today you still see money coming in f to make sure that these projects look decent. You see money still coming in for the Heritage Parks to do things on the common to keep it, you know, looking nice and, and making improvements. Those are things a long time ago. Now, then I went into private industry and I worked on things in there. Now, before, at that time when I did those things in the 70s, all I had was my vocational technical high school diploma from, from uh, it was then called the Greater Lawrence Regional Vocational Technical High School. And I went to um, Northeast Institute of Industrial Technology and I studied um, engineering, mathematics, statics and strength of materials and drafting design technology. And I went out and got a job at a company in Boston. And before you know it, I'm just working there as an ordinary drafter, but um, I'm getting into new things. And uh, so they sent me over to Carrier University to take some courses in HVAC design, and I did that. And uh, I worked on Copley Place, and when I worked on Copley Place, there were a number of problems that, that were in the plans, and I picked them right out. Just my experience in construction, I was able to pick out the defects and get corrections made. They also started coming to me. The chief architect of Copley Place, by the way, was a person that grew up on Tower Hill in Lawrence. I wish I could remember his name. He was living in Chicago at the time we did that project. And they'd start coming to me, well, what do you think? The, the, the bridge over Stewart Street, how should we design this? And uh, you know, I drew them some plans and they said, wow, that's fantastic. And then they started doing the calculations on the engineering and that to make sure it works. And I did things like the fountains, all kinds of little things. But anyway, I went off to um, Digital Equipment Corporation on a contract up in Merrimack, New Hampshire, worked with architects on all of the New Hampshire facilities, and then they sent me down to Acton. I went from there, I got bored with that because I, it was like nothing new happening after a while, and I went to Nashua Corporation, and there I invented a piece of equipment for them to use for um, cleaning computer disks, the old big old disks that they used to have. I don't see them anywhere anymore, but I went from there to GTE Sylvania, worked on a robotics project, then next door for Computer Corporation, and while I was there, because I was good at with the numbers and that, uh, uh, someone came <coughs> to me and I ended up doing all the planning studies for their um, United States headquarters that was in Burlington, Massachusetts, pre-planning studies. And uh, I left there when they were cutting back 
And the next thing you know, they needed me back. But I was working for an architect in Andover, so I brought them in as a client. Digital Equipment tried to get me back. I brought them in uh, as a potential client. It, um, it didn't work out. But then later, they lured me out of there and brought me to their Andover facility to work in facilities there. So I've, I worked on all different facets of things, you know. I understand that you're working with uh, Chapter 121B, 121A, then there's the zoning, I think it's 40A, I'm not sure if, if that's what it is, but I've worked on these things and with, with architects, I've also done building inspections. The, it just keeps getting broader and broader and with the engineering and that, I thought many years ago that Lawrence needed to change its transportation system, connect quicker to Boston. And when I found out that, this is 20 years ago now, when I found out that magnetic levitation technology was not perfected, I wanted to know why, and I perfected it. So I didn't get recognized for that for years, and now, you know, now companies and scientists and that put my name out there as uh, mm. a reference for it, so. <coughs> a question, uh, I'm just another question. Yeah. I know you've been in the city for a long time. Have you ever served on any boards uh, before? I've never, so this is your I've first never time? served actually on a board. Uh, back in the 70s, Harry Weinroth used to let me just come in and I'd, I'd meet with Eugenio Gonzalez that was in community development. Uh, and I remember and, that and we developed some mm -hmm. plans together. I'd, I got no pay for it. I, didn't, I wasn't looking for pay. You know what I was looking to do was to improve Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember yourself, uh, putting together a plan for a cr the park across the street from the tar box and the neighborhood yes, around sir. it. That was I mean, it was a fantastic. Was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a fantastic plan. I, I know it was a long you time ago. You remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably still have a picture somewhere around with the, uh, yeah. with, the, with the model that I built at that time. Yeah, no, it, there was an Eagle Tribune article about it and everything. It was, and it was mm -hmm. really, really showed that you had the uh, talent. That's that a long time. Plan, you know, the <laughs> I was surprised you weren't in community development <laughs> after that. <but> well, <laughs> Mr. O'Donoghue. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm true. <laughs> you have explained to us a bunch of redevelopment stuff that you've already done for the city, so this is obviously the correct board for you. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, what is, there? needless to say, it's all been said. Um, I don't believe that we have any questions for the candidate, <laughs> unless <laughs> Mr. Toomey has any questions <laughs> for the candidate. No, I've, uh, I've known Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Donoghue for quite a while. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would make a motion that we send his name up with a positive recommendation to the council, full council. Second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. O'Donoghue. We will see night. you here on Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, That's great. That's great. That's it, I think. <laughs> the Jennifer Clark. <laughs> Councillors, is there anything um, that is uh, tabled business that you would like to take off the table? Not at the moment, but I think we should look at some of these documents that have been in, in here since 2010. Maybe what, not tonight, but at some other time. What I was going to do is probably uh, the next meeting. We'll maybe the next meeting yeah. we because can look, look that at that to see if we want to remove yes. those. I was going to send out a memo to each individual, to the people who have these items on here to see if it's okay to withdraw the items. Great. I think there was a new item that was supposed to come down from uh, uh, from the city council, but I don't see it here, but I will ask Bill later about it. So okay. that's why. So if no one has anything to take off the table. Motion to adjourn. Second. Asked. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank